Oh my goodness, look at these two geckos. Let's build them a home. But first, more importantly. Yep, I need this. I built this epic, simple home for two New Zealand rare forest geckos. How did I do this? Well, I'm gonna walk you through the journey in this video. It was actually really, really simple. This is how I create natural environments or I try to replicate natural environments as much as possible. Now, what did I start with? I started with a substrate layer. I didn't need too many drainage layers for this one because I was only gonna plant moss to grow. I'll also use browse and other elements of hardscape such as ponga logs and anything else that they can hide or climb on. I'm keeping the substrate layer really, really simple. Just soil and cocoa fiber. Normally I add other elements of a drainage layer, but I decided not to on this occasion. This is the ponga log. Ponga logs make for an epic backdrop, as well as things to hide under to climb on for the geckos. You can actually chop it up really finely, and it's actually a really good substrate layer. And all the offcuts that come off the ponga log once I cut it up were also used as part of the elements of the substrate layer. All right, it's time to get to work. This is my favorite part of any enclosure build, the decorative part. So doing the substrate, doing the hardscape, adding all the greenery, adding all the plantation. Now, I'm gonna go in my backyard because this epic moss grows and it grows here in New Zealand, meaning that I'm replicating the same environment. This is fern moss, apparently, from what I've been told. Now, don't worry, my garden is pesticide free, so this is perfectly fine. It's also really shallow, so it's easy to plant. I also need some leaves, some leaf litter, some other bits and bobs, some little sticks, some little bark. but something's missing. I need bugs, I need isopods, I need cleanup crew. Now these guys will obviously become food in the end, but I just keep topping them up. But isopods, why isopods? Well, isopods do a very important job of cleaning the environment. They'll eat dead vegetation, they'll keep the soil nice and clean, they'll do their job, they'll also become food. It's a win-win, it's a bonus. They're actually cool little guys, I actually appreciate them. They're fun to watch. And you can actually keep them in terrariums on their own as pets, as it's done around the world. So when you watch all those terrarium videos online, you notice one thing, how epic moss looks in these environments, whether it's you know really, really short grass, whether it's different types of moss or fern, it's like the perfect element to add to any bioactive environment. Obviously it has to be in the right microclimate or the right stimulus. For example, if I'm gonna use this moss, I need to mist it daily, it needs to be the right temperatures, etc., etc. This is the therapeutic part of the terrarium builds and my enclosure builds. I really enjoy the planting process. It takes time, it takes a bit of patience, but once you do it right, once you put everything in the right place, then it just makes everything pop. Now once I've planted all the moss, I've put in the ponga log, I've put in the bark, the sticks, I'm gonna put in the leaf litter to finish off what I like to call the wireframe. Now the wireframe is basically the skeleton of the enclosure before I add the final pieces to add all the important elements in the end, just before the geckos go in. All right, so now I'm adding the browse. The browse is basically offcuts of any vegetation or plants that you wanna put into an enclosure. Now I'm adding native plants. These native plants grow in my garden, and this is the kofi. And the kofi is actually coming with some flowerings, which is perfect because native geckos love nectar, they love fruit puri, so they're gonna enjoy the kofi while it's flowering. This is the final build. I'm super stoked with this. This didn't take me long and it looks epic. Well, I think it looks epic. It's a perfect environment for native geckos that live here in New Zealand. I've tried to replicate their own environment as much as I can, which is basically a ponga backdrop with plenty of uh, boreal elements to climb on.
Now what I have here are two stunning New Zealand forest geckos. You need to enlist these guys into the military, look at that camouflage, it's crazy. Now New Zealand forest geckos do just fine outside and outdoor enclosures and I do have geckos outside but for these two I was going to bring them inside because for the winter it gets super cold in Canterbury so I want them to just adjust slowly and come out in spring. So hence it's like a quarantine or a transition period right before the summer months so they can get adjusted to the new home, the temporary home as well because they'll be in a much taller or boreal enclosure in the future. So what else can I tell you that you don't know? Well, these geckos are pretty rare. And what I mean by rare is they're common in New Zealand, but you can't get them anywhere else in the world. They're endemic to New Zealand, meaning they only thrive and live here. So that's pretty cool. And I'm very fortunate to have these in captivity. Now you need a permit to keep these guys in captivity, which is the other thing, because New Zealand obviously protects its wildlife. It's very important. Conservation is very important. And we know as a species globally what we do to the environment. So while they spend winter in this enclosure, I'm hoping that they adapt and adjust well to the Canterbury life. And some of the food I'll be giving them throughout winter will be dusted mealworms. They'll get crickets, they'll get locusts, they'll get moths, a lot of New Zealand native bugs because that's what they eat in the wild and I try to keep it as free range as possible. <laughs> So to conclude, I'm Max. I've been obsessed with ectotherms since I was a kid, and what I mean by ectotherms is reptiles, amphibians, fish, and vertebrae. I just haven't grown out of the hobby, and I think that's super dope. If you like what I'm doing, awesome. And stay tuned for the next one.